In this tutorial, I want to talk about refraction. Now the picture you can see there is a photo taken in Fiji. You've probably come across something like it before, where um, obviously this um, piece of wood here, although it appears to bend when it enters the water, in reality it's, it's going straight, it's in a straight line, but uh, the light is bending as it leaves the water, making it appear that the, the, uh, the log is bent. Refraction is the change in speed when a wave travels from one substance, called a medium, into another. Um, in the case of light, a light wave, it is the slowing down of a light wave when it enters a, a more, an optically more dense medium, or the opposite is also true if the light right wave is moving from an optically dense medium to an optically less dense medium, then the wave will actually speed up. So this can be illustrated um, the diagram we have here is um, a boundary. This could be the boundary between the, the water and the air, for example. And a line perpendicular to the boundary is called the normal. Um, we'll make this the air. And this boundary down here, this is the water. Now, <clears throat> optical density is measured with a thing called refractive index. For, for air, the refractive index is equal to 1, and for water, the refractive index is equal to about 1.3. The refractive index can be thought of as the slowing down factor. Uh, the higher the refractive index, the more the light will slow down when it enters that optical medium. So in the case of light travelling from a, a less optically dense medium, like air, into a more optically dense medium like water, uh, we can represent that with a light, way, a light ray coming in like this. And the angle between the normal and the light ray is what's called the angle of incidence. We call that theta 1. <clears throat> now when the, the light enters the more optically dense medium, it slows down. And when it slows down, it bends towards the normal. So that's a really important concept that you need to understand. If the light ray enters at an angle to the normal, then it will bend as it slows down. And uh, in the case of going from an optically less dense medium to an optically more dense medium, the light wave will always bend towards the normal. So in this case, although it's not drawn very, very well, theta 1 is going to be greater than theta 2. Now, if I was to increase the angle of incidence like this, so make it even larger, that just means that it's going to bend more towards the normal. So that is the case for going from optically less dense to optically more dense. The wave slows down and it bends towards the normal. The second case is the complete opposite. So again, we have our boundary like this. Um, in this case, we're going to have water, and it's going to be going into air. <clears throat> so again, water has a um, refractive index of, of uh, 1.3, and air has a refractive index of 1.0. And that refractive index is kind of like the slowing down factor. We draw in our normal, which is always a perpendicular at right angles to the, the boundary. It's a right angle there. And we have our light ray entering into the... like this. At the moment, it's moving through the water, and our angle of incidence will be the angle between the light ray and the normal. In the case of going from water to air, we are traveling from an optically more dense medium into an optically less dense medium. This means that instead of slowing down, the wave actually speeds up when it enters into the air. And if it's, it is an angle between the normal and the, the light ray, <clears throat> then the light ray is going to bend away from the normal when it enters into the air. So our angle of refraction, this angle here, theta 2, is the angle of refraction, is going to be greater than the angle of incidence. So in the case of going from a, <clears throat> a more dense 
uh, well, more optically dense medium into less dense, the wave speeds up and bends away from the normal, where in this case, theta 1 is less than theta 2. <clears throat> Okay, so in your exam you'll be expected to to understand and maybe draw diagrams like this. And you'll also be expected to work out what uh, theta 2 is, the angle of refraction will be for a, a given a refractive index for medium 1 and 2 and for a given angle of incidence. Now the way that you do this is with an equation called Snell's Law. And Snell's Law is written like this. N1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So in this equation, uh, n1 is the refractive index of the first medium, n2 is the refractive index of the second medium, theta 1 is the angle of incidence, and theta 2 is the angle of refraction. So as an example, let's imagine that we're looking at the, um, the first diagram here. So it's traveling from, from air to water. And let's make the um, angle of incidence equal to, say, I don't know, 50 degrees. We know that N1 is equal to 1, and we know that N2 is equal to 1.3. So what you want to do is put those numbers into the formula. So 1.0 times the sine... 50 degrees is equal to 1.3 sine theta 2 and we're solving for theta 2. Uh, doing a quick bit of rearranging the sine of theta 2 should be equal to 1.0 sine 50 divided by 1.3 which means that finally theta 2 is the inverse sine of 1.0 sine 50 degrees divided by 1.3. So doing this in the calculator, we've got here <clears throat> the inverse sine, often brackets, well 1 times sine 50 is just sine of uh, 50. And that is divided by 1.3. Now, when you're doing this, make sure your calculator is set to degrees. Otherwise, you might get the wrong answer. So that means that our angle of refraction is 36 degrees. And looking back at the definition at the top here, if we're going from an optically less dense medium to an optically more dense medium, we know the light ray is going to slow down, it's going to bend towards the normal, which means the angle of refraction should be less than the angle of incidence. And doing a quick check here, our angle of incidence was 50, our angle of refraction is 36 degrees, so we know we're on the right track. Um, of course, Snell's Law can also be used to work out the angle of refraction for a light ray going from an optically um, more dense medium into an optically less, less dense medium, you would use the, the formula exactly the same way. So those are the basic ideas behind refraction, and uh, it's the kind of thing you'll have to do in your exam. If we go back down to the original picture, so try to explain what's going on here. This would be your, your normal. It's the, the line that's perpendicular to the boundary. The boundary is the, the second line put in there between the water and the air. Um, this is me at the time looking at the, the log. Now, we perceive light as traveling in straight lines, so therefore, when I'm looking at the, the log, to me the light looks like it's going straight from the log, um, well, where the log appears to be under the water, into my eyes. In reality, the, the log is there. It's perfectly straight as it goes into the water. So for this to uh, make sense, the light from where the log is it actually is, must be bending when it leaves the water and enters the air. 
In this case, it's going from an optically more dense medium into an optically less dense medium, so the light ray will bend away from the normal and into my eyes. So therefore, I perceive the log to be um, over here, or further away than what it really is. And this explains a lot of things you've probably seen before. For example, the way that a, um, a spoon will appear bent in a, in a, water, a glass of water. Um, and uh, a classic example in exams they give is uh, someone who's maybe spearfishing, and the fact that uh, where they think the fish is and where it actually is is quite different due to the fact that the light rays are bending as they leave the water.